Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do this morning is put together a little seminar for you guys based on an article that I recently wrote for a magazine called the Top 10 Meat Gathering Resources that you can place into your pack. And these could also be put into a five gallon bucket. Everything on this table except this takedown bow will all fit into one five gallon bucket, making it very easy to store for an emergency situation in your vehicle especially. And that's kind of the mentality I had when I wrote this article was, if I were going to have my Jeep and I had that ability of conveyance and I could just put one thing in that Jeep or one container like a five gallon bucket that was going to have lots and lots of things in it I could secure meat sources with for a medium term length of time, what would they be? And there's a lot of items that I chose that could also be put into a backpack for daily carry or for the bug out type scenario if that's what you choose to call it just to make it easier for you to get some type of food sources if you wanted to not that you have to have them but when you're talking about the very long term or a self-reliance scenario i think you have to just understand and just put it in your mind that you're going to have to have steel traps you're going to have to have those heavy duty steel traps for modern trapping. And we've talked about that in past videos. They're heavy, they weigh a lot, but they last forever. They're fairly easy to use. You can use them in blind sets without bait, depending on the trap you have. And they hold game very, very well. And some of them kill the game instantly, which means you don't have to worry about the animal being alive when you get there and have to dispatch it. So all of those things are advantageous when it comes to those steel traps. But steel traps, again, are fairly heavy. So when I wrote this article, I based it on things that you could put in a backpack if you wanted to without adding a lot of weight to it in some combination of this stuff that's laying on the table here. Or you could put all of this pretty much into a five gallon bucket, except a takedown bow, and throw that somewhere and save it for safekeeping for an emergency later. So let's walk through these items one at a time and we'll talk a little bit about my mentality behind why I chose these items. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with what I would call on the water's edge because on the water's edge to me is the most prolific place that you're going to find food, meat source type food. You have fish, you have frogs, you have turtles, you have birds, you have all the mammals that have to go there to drink. You have reptiles. All of those things are going to be around water. So a water source area is going to be my main target to find food easily. All right, so looking at this on the water's edge mentality, one thing that I carry with me all the time is like a veil or a net. And I carry this instead of a smog most of the time because it will do everything a smog will do, but it also gives me that ability of having that net to use as a seining net or a dip net. And it works for everything else that you would need it for, from just something to cool yourself down by the creek, some type of hygiene, first aid, all of those things, emergency slings and bandages, can all be made with this, but it also gives you an easy way to gather both food sources and bait with small fish, crayfish, and things like that that you could dip net with an implement like this very, very easily. So I didn't really include this in the top 10 because I think it's something you should have on you all the time. Now, the other thing I didn't include in the top 10, other than this spear knife, and we'll talk about that in a minute, is a knife. A lot of people would say, oh, well, a knife is for hunting. No, a knife's really not for hunting. A knife is for processing that food after you've hunted. If you have to go out and kill game with a knife, you've really done something wrong to begin with, in my humble opinion. But with that said, I would have some type of knife that is basically a throwaway. And that's why I have this cold steel Bushman, because they're so cheap, it's a throwaway. It's like a mora. If I lose it, I don't care. If I damage it, I don't care but it's made out of one solid piece of steel. So it's gonna be hard to tear it up. It's gonna give me that ability of making a spear if I really need it in a dead emergency. If I have to, maybe I have to kill a large pig or something that's in a trap that I've snared along the trail and I have to put him down. This will allow me to do that with a stick on the end of it from safe distance instead of having to get up close and personal, which I would do if I were hunting and there were plenty of people around. And I've done it lots of times, but it's not something you wanna to try to key man in an emergency scenario and possibly get yourself hurt you want to put a stick in this thing and do it from a distance so this will work for that but it's also good for processing wood processing game it holds a pretty decent edge 
and again, it's a throwaway. So this is not my one tool option belt knife that I carry with me all the time. And it's not really a knife I'm adding to this kit. It's more of a utilitarian type tool that happens to have a cutting blade on it as well. So that is a good add for something that's fairly cheap, in my opinion. Now, let's get back to that on the water's edge for a minute. So first things first, I would say that probably the easiest way to catch food other than with some type of dip net is going to be with some type of gig, whether that be fish, frogs, snakes, whatever the case may be right there by the water's edge or right up against the bank, even small fish, a gig's gonna get that done for you. And you could use a fairly small gig like this number 30 B&M, which is a frog type gig. You could also be used for fish. And I just made a PVC sheath for it. It's just a flattened piece of PVC. It's duct taped over to protect any of my gear when it's in my pack. Or you could choose to use a bigger type spear like this number four that's got really, really heavy duty tines and barbs on it that are almost the size of a 20 penny spike on there. And this is going to do lots for you as far as something that will kill much bigger type prey or animals than say this gig right here is going to do. So for me, probably the number one item I would add if I were to make a list of top 10 items, a frog or fish gig would be the number one item I would add. And the reason for that is it doesn't take up a lot of room. It's fairly flat. It doesn't weigh a whole lot, but the longevity of a tool like this to use over and over and over again for multiple applications from pinning down snakes to killing an animal that's in a trap to spearing fish and frogs, all of those type things. And the fact that I can put this on the end of a stick to get the reach I want to pull something out of a tree if I need to, whether it be a bird nest, pulling off nuts, scraping nuts off of a branch, hickory nuts and things like that, or walnuts. All of those things make this a huge tool to add to your pack. So that would be number one for me right after this. Okay, looking at on the water's edge, again, I would probably look to add some type of fishing equipment, some type of terminal tackle. And I'm not gonna worry, I'm gonna stage that depending on what I'm packing it into. If I'm just putting this stuff in my backpack, I'm probably gonna go with a simple pocket fishing kit because I can catch bluegill right off the edge of the bank all day long with this thing and fill my frying pan. This is the perfect option for that. It's small, it's lightweight, it's got terminal tackle on the inside, bobbers, hooks, sinkers. You've got line on the outside. You can store an extra length of line on the inside as well for an emergency if you needed to. And it just gives you the versatility of being able to catch those small fish very, very easily that are bigger than what you're gonna catch in something like this. But you don't have to employ any type of cast net or gill net or anything to catch them. This is lightweight. So this would probably be my number two item after a frog gig. Now, if I were going to expand my fishing a little bit, then I would add some more terminal tackle. I would have a double-sided case like this one that has sinkers and hooks in it and things like that, different size hooks, bigger ones and smaller ones. And remember that small hooks catch all the fish. Big hooks only catch the big fish. And unless I'm setting limb lines, trout lines, things like that, I'm not worried about catching, you know, eight pound catfish or five pound bass. I'm worried about getting four inch bluegill. Those are easy enough to get right off the bank with this. If I'm going to expand my kit, then I'm gonna add bigger things for bigger fish. And I'm gonna add larger diameters of line or stronger lines, like possibly this number 36 Tard Mariner's Bank line or a trout line, or something like this Kevlar heavy duty 200 pound test line. And then I'm probably gonna add a real simple yo-yo type reel like a Cuban yo-yo that I can actually throw this thing out to fish and they cast like this basically. You hold it in your hand like this and you just hold it in one hand, cast with the other and it pulls the line off. And then you can use this as a reel when you catch a fish. So you could actually just put this on a tree stump and it will unwind or start to pull out as the fish runs with it. You can pick it up off of there, set the hook and reel them in. This is a pretty good add that doesn't take up a lot of weight. And if you're using like a, what I use a lot of times for a lot of my kit like that is just like a 10 liter bag. And this thing fits down perfect right in the bottom of that 10 liter bag with everything else stuck on top of it. So it's a pretty good add that doesn't add a lot of weight to your kit if you're trying to diversify your fishing. Okay, okay the next item I'd probably add to my kit would be a steel rat trap. And I say steel because of the longevity. 
These things have lots of areas and holes in the bottom of the steel plate to be able to attach this to limbs, logs, tie it off with bank line or paracord so that it can't run away on you. But they're really, really heavy duty rat traps. There's no doubt in my mind this thing will kill a squirrel in a second. And they have jaws on three edges here of the trap, which makes them even more lethal for catching larger animals. But chipmunks, mice, rats are not gonna have a chance around this thing. So putting six of these in your bag gives you six quick, easy sets around your camp where those small type animals may be coming into anyway, and you don't have to walk long distance to catch that food or that bait, depending on what else you're using for trapping. All right, so that would probably be the next item that I would have. Okay, so probably the first longer distance weapon I would choose would be the slingshot. It's easy to pack, it's easy to carry, it doesn't take up a lot of room. I can shove it into a cargo pocket and it gives me that longer range ability to hunt small game spur of the moment. And it could be a wrist rocket type slingshot like this one, or it could be like a scout slingshot from Simple Shot that doesn't have the wrist brace. But once you get used to shooting a slingshot, you'll understand that it's a very effective small game hunting weapon. And there's going to be times that you're going to want that because you'll see something off in the distance that you want to hunt and you're not gonna be able to trap it because you're seeing it on the spur of the moment. So you have to have something in your range or your arsenal to allow you some medium shots on game spur of the moment. Slingshot gives you that. So that would be my next choice. Now I have water's edge ability. I have ability to trap smaller game around my camp area. And now I have the ability to hunt game at range smaller game, whether it's around my camp or while I'm at the water's edge, out checking and setting traps or out fishing, I have that ability of an at range shot spur of the moment. So with that said, that would be my first choices. Now, if I'm going to expand that kit even further, I'm gonna add a few more items. The first one I would probably add going back to that water's edge mentality would be some type of a net needle and a gauge of material, a gauge of cordage that I could make gill nets with. Now, this is going to assist you in your trot line. It's going to give you extra fishing line. It's going to give you repair material for making repairs on gear. But it's also going to give you the ability with a net needle that you can actually manufacture off the landscape fairly easily. As long as you have the knowledge to be able to make nets, you can make that gill net on the fly to stretch across a creek or whatever the case may be. You can make dip nets, but being able to make net is a very important longer term skill that's very easy to affect if you've got a big roll of cordage like this. So that would be the next thing that I would add would be that next roll of cordage and possibly a net needle if I didn't want to manufacture one because I can also use this to carry line on as well as a line winding device. So it just gives me something easy to put in my pack that I may already have for carrying cordage that can also be used multifunctional as a net needle and I can always use my knife sheath as a mesh gauge or my fingers or I can just cut a piece of wood for that as well so that gives you that much more versatility in your fishing type kit now if I'm going to improve on my trapping and go a little bit beyond the rat trap scenario now I'm probably going to think about do I want something that's going to be longer term or short shorter term use and snares while they're very, very effective and they can be used without any type of bait because they're blind sets, most generally speaking, unless you're snaring rabbits, they're going to be a one-time use with a steel snare. A steel cable snare is going to hold larger game very, very well. They're not going to get away from this, but it's a one meal deal. You got 12 snares, you got 12 dinners. That's pretty much the way you have to look at that because if you catch anything bigger, than a very small possum or a rabbit in a snare like this, it's gonna be destroyed beyond use as soon as you catch that animal in it. So what you can do is you can add 12 snares as your next priority, or for me, I think my next priority would be something like a ready-made trap trigger like these DF4s. And I like these DF4s really well for a lot of reasons. A, they're lightweight. They're made out of machined aircraft aluminum and a whole bag of these things, a whole bag of these things of 12, probably doesn't even weigh a pound and a half. So I've got 12 pretty much instant traps right here that I can create on the fly with simple deadfalls. 
and they are very, very sensitive traps. To me, again, I can carve these things out of wood. I can bushcraft or primitively craft these type trap triggers, but they're never going to be as easy. They're never going to be as long lasting and they're never going to be probably as sensitive or effective as this is. This thing takes barely anything to set it off and it's very, very secure. It also holds a large amount of weight. Remember that with a deadfall, you need a deadfall five times heavier than the prey you're trying to kill. So if you're trying to kill a 10 pound raccoon, you're gonna have to have a 50 pound deadfall. This will hold 50 pounds. It's very difficult to construct a figure four trap trigger that's not monstrous in diameter to hold 50 pounds of weight. And then the bigger those components are, the less likely it is to work very, very effectively for something as big as a medium-sized raccoon. These are very effective. They hold a lot of weight. They're lightweight and they're long-lasting. They don't take up a lot of room. 12 of them fits in this bag like it's nothing. And it doesn't take up hardly any room in a pack on the side of a water bottle pouch, whatever you decide to put it in. But these DF4 trap triggers, I believe, are a great add in my top 10. Then I would go to snares. And I would put 12 snares in there, knowing that that's going to guarantee me 12 meals, at least, because we're not talking about forever. We're talking about longer term. We're not talking about the self-reliance scenario. I'm going to have steel traps for that. So this guarantees me 12 meals. If I get lucky and they don't trash the snare and I can use it more than once, then maybe I get 13 to 15 meals out of it. Trap triggers first, snares next. All right, now, now I want to expand on everything a little bit. I want to expand my hunting abilities and some of my on the water's edge abilities. The simplest way to do that is with a takedown bow because I can replace the string if I have to. I have plenty of material to do that. Bank line makes a fine bow string. So I can use bank line to replace the string. I can replace the arrows if I have to with straight shafts out of the woods. What's hardest to recreate is the bow itself that's long lasting. To me, my mentality, compound bows, things with pulleys on them, whether it's a crossbow that's compound or a long bow that's compound, is out of the question. Because they're too easy to damage and they're not long lasting. So I want a regular traditional long bow or recurve bow. And for me, for an emergency kit, I want it to be something that I really don't care if it just sits there for a while and I never touch it. And I also don't want it to be something that if something does happen to it, it's going to break my heart. Why would I want, you know, a $600 Matthew switchback in my truck and I'm not going to use it for an extended period of time. And then when I do need it and I drop it or something happens to it in an emergency, I can't use it anyway. It's damaged and I'm out 600 bucks. It's much easier to get some type of a takedown recurve, one of the takedown survival bows on the market or something like this, which is just an old solid fiberglass Ben Pearson takedown longbow. This is a 45 pound bow strong enough to kill anything in North America by a long shot. It's solid fiberglass with a leather wrapped grip. It comes in two pieces. Fiberglass is almost indestructible. So this thing's gonna last forever. It's probably 70 years old now. And it's gonna last another 70 or 80 years beyond the shadow of a doubt because fiberglass just doesn't go bad over time. It's also not gonna be as susceptible because it's thick, heavy fiberglass to warpage that you would get from a thinner limbed, wider limbed type recurve bow of today. So if I store this thing around heat or something like that, it's not going to be near susceptible to delamination or warpage over time. Again, that makes it more preferable to me. And it's easy to string, it's easy to maintain, and it's fairly easy to learn to shoot. Now, let's talk about bow accessories that are going to make this thing a little more versatile. The first thing I would want maybe is something that I could fish with it. So you can get these gadget adapters very inexpensively and they just wrap around the bow here and all you do is wrap these straps around it and cinch them off and then you can attach a fishing reel to the front of that bow just like this and now I have the ability if I have a fishing arrow or if I have you know my cordage which I already have and I want to manufacture one out of wood I have the ability to make a fishing type implement with this bow 
So now I've increased this bow from not only hunting upland game to hunting around the water as well. A couple of cheap flip-flop style limb quivers for any arrows that I make so I don't have to carry them on my back through the woods. If you've ever carried a quiver on your back through the woods, you know that that's just complete pain in the neck because they catch on everything. I'd much rather carry those arrows on the limbs of my bow when I'm walking around if that's what I need to do. But my preference would be takedown arrows if I was going to carry something and then just hope I didn't lose them and when I did I could replace them with wooden shafts easier than I can replace a bow. Takedown arrows like these that we saw at the Pathfinder School and Self-Reliance Outfitters are very, very good. They come in three pieces. They have almost zero run out. Um, there's been a lot of technology that's went behind these in testing and building these arrows. So they're a very good, reliable arrow. They have feather veins on them, so they shoot very good out of any traditional bow. Even if you ended up having to make a bow, these arrows would shoot out of it very good. We've shot these out of a 60-pound compound bow, and they shoot very accurately out of a compound bow as well. But they take down into a very small package with three pieces, and they're easy to store that way. So I can put a whole bunch of these in that five-gallon bucket or whatever the case may be and have them for the longer term if I need them. Fishing arrows the same way. The last thing I would probably put in my kit would be some type of box that had some extra tips and broadheads in it. So I'm going to have a few extra broadheads in there, maybe an extra fishing tip, a few field points, and maybe a few hex blunts or rubber blunt points for small game hunting so I'm not sticking those things into the dirt and they kind of bounce off things when they hit instead of sticking in and breaking my arrows off. So those would be just in a small box like this and that would be in my kit as well. That really rounds my kit out because now I can hunt at longer ranges. I can use different types of ammo for hunting. I have several ways to trap, several ways to fish, and several ways to hunt or kill game up close and personal from gigs to a spear knife if I have to use it for that. Then I have what I need to get the smallest of game possible or bait because I have small fishing hooks, small fishing line, and I have some type of netting material that I can use for sanding or catching crayfish. That gives me a very, very well-rounded kit with only 10 items. So to go over those 10 items with you real quick, and I got them listed here just in case you don't want to rewind this thing to follow through. I have on here a gig, a Pathfinder fishing kit or pocket fishing kit and terminal tackle, a slingshot, steel rat traps, snares and DF4s, whichever order you want to go with them. The DF4s would be my preference first and then snares. Um, trot line with bigger hooks and things like that. The spear knife, a takedown bow, and then something to make a gill net with. Really, these aren't in the specific order we talked about, but they're pretty close. But it gives you that top 10 items, and you can pick and choose from there. If I were to say, hey, I'm building a very small pack that I'm going to carry with me most of the time when I'm in the woods, and I just want something with me in an emergency that I can hunt for some food while I'm waiting on someone to come find me in case my stomach starts to rumble, what I'd tell you is throw a simple frog gig in there and a pocket fishing kit and you're pretty much going to have food. Next thing I'd say is throw a slingshot in there. Between those three items, you're not talking about hardly any room or weight whatsoever to put those three small items into a backpack. That's a single pocket. And you could actually put a tube of ammunition in there as well for the slingshot if you wanted to, so you already had some to start with before you find any. And that gives you a pretty well-rounded little hunting kit and fishing kit in a very small package. So that would be my advice to anyone asking, hey, if I was only going to put a couple items in a bag to be able to secure meat sources, what would I put in there? Those would be the top three that I would go with. Okay, folks, well, this was just a quick little seminar to show you some ideas of items that you could gather together, place in one container or one backpack to give you a good variety of hunting and meat gathering tools in one place for an emergency, or some simple items that you could add to your daily pack or your daily carry if you wanted to in case you ran into an emergency scenario and you got a little hungry before you got rescued. So I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this video today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. For all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, be sure to check out our website at www.selfrelianceoutfitters.com, and I'll be back with another video.
as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.